here this morning. Amen. The situation was so severe that all began to believe that there would be no one surviving this one. All right. The passengers even had to stop eating. Can you imagine? Nobody wanted to eat in the midst of a bad storm like that. Uh, that was talk of killing the prisoners so that they would not escape in case they should somehow make their way to shore. However, the Apostle Paul stood up and he spoke to all on board. He told them that the Lord sent an angel to him during the night and told him that all on board would be spared, but that the ship would be destroyed. Paul had warned the Julius not to take that particular vessel, but Julius had not listened to wise counsel. Uh, Julius put his trust in the crew, in the captain of the ship, and the ship itself. I remember a time when some folks put their trust in a captain and put their trust in a ship. A ship that was supposed to be unsinkable. It was called the Titanic. Paul, on the other hand, put his trust in the Lord. Now that you have a little bit of background information, please allow me to proceed to proclaim or to preach the word. Uh, many years ago, the late Dr. Benjamin Reed, a longtime pastor of the First Church of God, Los Angeles, California, uh, told this story. He said he was on an airplane bound for Indianapolis, Indiana. And on that plane was a man who just could not stop talking. So he engaged Dr. Reed in a long discourse. Uh, Dr. Reed said the man made one interesting statement to him that this was his first flight and that he was a bit nervous. Dr. Reed was dressed in his black suit and a liturgical collar because he had to speak that night and he knew that he would not have time to change clothes. So everyone on the plane knew that he was a preacher. Yes. Yeah. It's good to have a doctor on board <laughs> when you fly. But it's also good to have a godly man or woman on board yeah. if you need them. Right. Dr. Reed goes on to say that after a while, seatbelt lights came on. The pilot came on and said, we're running into some rough turbulence. I'm going to suggest that you fasten your seatbelts. Everyone remain in your seat. That we will get through this somehow. Well, he went on to say that that plane began to shake and quake and it dropped and he thought it had fallen out of the sky. He said the man reached over and grabbed his arm and said, Now, Doc, uh, look, look here, you, 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 you need to talk to the man upstairs and you, you need to tell him that, uh, to get this plane down, to get this plane down. And Dr. Reed said, he touched the man on his shoulder and said, friend, you don't have anything to worry about. He said, before I got on this plane, I had a talk with the man upstairs. And he has assured me that I will get to Indianapolis and to Anderson, Indiana, and back home to L.A. He said, to go a little further, I want you to know that I got some folks back home right now that are praying for me. He said, and because I'm going to get to where I need to go, you're going to get where you need to go. So sit back and relax. Now, why did I tell you that story? You see, Paul knew that God was on his side. And he knew that God had already promised him that he was going to get to Rome, no matter how he was going to get there. But the ship that he was on would be destroyed. I want you to know something this morning. You can depend on God. In the midst of a very dangerous and difficult journey, Paul did four things. First and foremost, he kept everybody on board. There were no deserters. You know, in the midst of a storm, some folks would say, I'll take my chance in the ocean. 
they'll jump overboard. There were no deserts. You want to take notes, jump that down. Secondly, he encouraged the ones on board to keep up their normal lives. He said, I pray you, take a little food. Now they're in the midst of a storm and Paul's talking about food. He knew they would need their nourishment. What am I saying to you this morning? There are times in this world when you meet some difficult storms that you are so depressed, you are so heartbroken, you are so upset that you don't even want to eat. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, I look around and y'all don't look like you but you can get so depressed, become so ill, that you don't want food. But Paul says, take some food. You're going to need your nourishment. Thirdly, Paul had the grace of gratitude. He gave thanks. In the midst of a storm, he still gave thanks to the Lord. What was it that Paul knew that those others on board didn't know? He knew Almighty God. And he knew that God was going to see him through this one because he had seen him through a lot. Somebody in this room this morning needs to realize that God did it once, for yet he'll do it again. Oh my Lord, somebody must be this morning. Sitting around here all sad, worried, and depressed, wondering how you're going to get out of this one. Put your faith in the Lord, brothers and sisters. He'll see you through whatever it is that you're going through if you're here. Fourth thing that Paul did was he infected his fellow passengers with his contagious faith. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's one reason why our churches are not growing the way they ought to. Because we don't have contagious faith. Wow. Oh, we say we have a faith, but we don't have the kind of faith that will attract others. We don't let folks see our faith. We'll talk about it. Oh, yeah, girl, I love the Lord. I believe that Jesus is able to do it. But is it contagious? Wow. You catch poison ivy. <laughs> you can give it to somebody else. But you catch your Christianity and you want to hold on to it. Here we go. This church and its future appears to be caught in a financial storm. We're being tossed to and fro. It seems very difficult to make ends meet. The same thing is happening in many of your personal lives. Your personal storm has become the church's storm. Finances are strained. They're being tested to their limit. Purses have a hold in them. There are some of you who have thought about deserting. You thought about leaving this church and going to a larger church right. Right. where the responsibility of you doing your part may not be as great. Good luck. <laughs> no matter where you go, you're going to find the same story. Yes, yes. Tithes and offerings are down. Amen. We need money for this. We need money for that. Yes. Our country has gone from a level three yes. in terms of its credit rating down to a level two. Right. So if a country is in trouble, you can imagine what's happening to the church. Yes. Yes. Some want to desert and simply stay home until the storm is passed so they will not be convicted to give anything, including themselves. Don't desert. Read the word. Brothers and sisters, Amen. just because times are hard, yes. stay in the word. Amen. Don't desert fellowship yes. with the saints. Yes. Don't desert sound doctrine. Yes. Don't desert biblical convictions. Yes. Yes. You are going to be tested in the midst of your storm yes. to do things that you know are wrong. Mm. Stay with the storm. Jesus is in the storm. Amen. The brothers were on that ship. Jesus was asleep. Storms come up when they're least expected. Does anybody know what I'm talking about?